very fortunate to be joined by a former well-known running back in the Big Ten, a uh, well-known player for the Vikings. Uh, used to host a sports show, and if you don't know him from any of that, his he has a son named Race, and both of their last names is Thompson. So uh, that should clue you in. Darren Thompson, thank you so much. Man. Thank Good you to very see much. Thanks for having me. Saw him last year in Vegas. Uh, was walking around with Dean Garrett. That was amazing. Walk around with Dean out there. Is, it's like walking around with the president. Dean, Dean, Dino. I mean, it was it didn't matter where we went. Uh, what a great guy! But I, I found out that you guys used to host a sports, a, a TV sports show together. We did. We did a little sports show together. It's probably been 18 or 19 years ago. Um, just when he got out of the league, you know, it was an opportunity for us to, uh, you know, be on TV, talk about sports, just kind of a round table um, type of piece. And uh, that's how we got to be friends. And you know, a great guy. He, he was pretty excited that my son was. Uh, was a Hoosier. So it's kind of a small world situation that comes up when you have uh, you know, people in common and uh, to be out there in Vegas with him. You're right. He is uh, you know, kind of the mayor of the, uh, of the city. Yeah, and everything doesn't always work out for uh, everyone as far as where they grow up or live and get the work, especially when it comes to pro sports or sports in general. But man, you've had a pretty touched life and getting to play for Minnesota and getting to play for the Vikings and then you've been working for, for the Gophers. I've been working at all, yes, and I've been um, broadcasting for University of Minnesota. I actually played for the Packers, and now I've been um, broadcasting for University of Minnesota now going on 26 years. That's just, it's got to be awesome just to be able to stay in, in one spot. I mean, not exactly one, but the same region. No, it has been. It's been a blessing. I think that's one of the reasons I probably never really went into the coaching piece. I think for me, I know my friends that coach us, you know, hired and fired, and at least me, my friends probably are in their mid-50s, six, seven, eight times, but I know it just happens. So no matter what, you know, things are going wherever you're at, essentially, something happens, and uh, they got to get a new staff, or someone gets elevated, or someone wants to move somewhere else. So um, being able to be in the broadcast is uh, a little more stability than I've been able to do. And the people in, in Minnesota, they love their sports. Uh, I was griping earlier because we had to go up there for basketball media days, and we got to go back up there. It's just kind of out of the way for us, but it's a great city. Uh, it's, I, I just went to ask what's better than Albany, where I had to go last year, so trust me. But it's, it's a good area. I have one of my best friends just moved back from there. He's been there for a long time. But the people love their sports, man. They 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 showed out at the uh, women's basketball tournament. I think they sold that thing out. It was the biggest attendance they'd ever had. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think Caitlin Clark had a lot to do with that. But it was it was a lot of fun. People do appreciate um, women's sports in Minnesota. We have links have had a great tradition. But we have the Vikings and the, and the Gophers. And obviously, hockey is a huge deal in Minnesota. I mean, we, you know, People start their kids playing hockey almost, um, you know, from the time they can, from the time they can walk into skates. So we do certainly appreciate, um, you know, sports in the Twin Cities. Uh, someone is the former freshman of the year in this league. You, you've been doing the broadcasting for Minnesota. So this is the last year for divisions. Minnesota has had some success under PJ, but there are teams. That happened in Indiana, uh, Rutgers, there's maybe one or two others that have just been struggling. Just getting rid of these divisions, especially for someone like Indiana who's having to play Michigan, Michigan State, Penn State. Uh, I mean, it's still going to be, I just think it's going to be a challenge no matter what. I mean, we're kind of in that middle range too with you guys, and I think, you know, the Ohio State's and Michigan's, you know, USC's, I think it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be challenging to say, who you play, how you travel, all those things are going to be. And I think football is probably going to be the easiest. I mean, being about basketball, and some of the others are going to be a little bit more challenging. But I think it's going to be really interesting to see how the schedules get laid out and where people live. We're still, still big, whatever we are now. It's going to be a challenge for um, – <laughs> Whatever it is, yeah. Six, I think it'll be 16. Yeah, I think it'll be 16. Um, it, the division's going away. 
I, I'm going to be happy about that because it kind of opens up more schedules, it opens up uh, different things, and then you're bringing in UCLA and USC. Obviously, that's really exciting for fans. Uh, a little weird for those of us that are kind of traditionalists, but it is what it is. So uh, I'm, I'm kind of oh, I think pushing myself past, past tradition. We've been, I mean, to me, when Rutgers and Maryland came in, I was like, oh, that's when the Penn State, you know, like, oh, everything was kind of, you know, really that was when I was just like, I just got to kind of change my, my mindset around it's not going to be, you know, Indiana. Michigan, Michigan State is going to be start going to other places. Now we're basically covering the entire United States, coast to coast. And Minnesota is, like I said, they're obviously has more success than Indiana and Rutgers, but they're still. They're not in the, the realm of Michigan and, and, and Ohio State and all that. With NIL now, how that has changed, is that going to help or hurt a team like Minnesota? I think it hurts a little bit in the beginning. We have, to, we have work to do to get caught up. You know, actually, I think we're behind Indiana right now, just as far as being able to um, you know, recruit players. You know, this is kind of like the final question. That I like the coach. I like the community. I like my teammates. Okay. You know, and then the kid kind of looks more likely. He's like, what's, gonna, what's, what's the package look like? Just, I can't. It's hard for me to fathom that. You know, that's just kind of part of it nowadays. Everything else is all equal. Okay, great. I want to be there. Good to be fan base now. What's the last piece? You know, that last piece is an IL for pretty much all kids. Have you been rowing the boat in the off season? I've been rowing, I've been training. I mean I'm the Peloton, rowing the boat, you name it. I'm trying I gotta I gotta get in shape. You know, I got I got grandkids now, I gotta chase them around. Uh, that old, that usually will keep you in shape. Uh Race Thompson was a member of the Knicks summer league uh, team which was very very cool and surprising for that he, dealt with some injuries uh through that but what what's uh how's things going for race oh well, he got good news yesterday race got uh, his leg got knee got back extended um his training camp or whatever they call it for basketball with the knicks so he got set home about two weeks ago so you know they found out that um it's not a tremendous but they'll so treat it for like three weeks he can start rehabbing in about three weeks and hopefully you get back on the board and you know, try to make his way into play uh, special that's his, that's his goal. Anything with the Knicks that's coming up once he gets through that, or does he just start? I think we'll process? have to wait and see. I think we'll have to wait and see what happens with them, injuries, other players, and opportunities. And he's got to go to another team. It's a play going overseas. And, all that. So that's what see. and there are a, a ton of former IU players playing, whether it's in this league or – Overseas, Jordan Holes, who just came back, is coaching now. He had a 10 year run. Uh, there, Joji Farrell, who was just in the league, is, is over there somewhere. Uh, Mo Creek, who's playing in the TBT, is, is over there. There's so many guys that are playing, and, and it's, it's a great way to make a living. Um, no, I could travel basketball young. or run a football to make a living. I, I always tell any young guys that I'm around mentoring or just having a conversation, I say, you know, play until it kind of gets until they tell you you can't play. You're injured or they say you're not quite good enough, you don't quite have enough speed or quite enough height or quite enough length or whatever. You know, then let it go. But that says, you know, you'll never get another chance to run around and sweat and block shots and tackle people for a living. So that's what you're doing until you can't or don't need to. Uh, done with the kids. Uh, no more kids in school. Uh, we race is our youngest, so yeah, we're we're done. We have we are empty nesters. We, obviously, we got dogs and kids. Is that a good go. thing that you don't have to worry about it watching? Not worry about watching, but the the, the things that go along with watching your kids <laughs> win or or lose. Uh, it is um, sometimes exhausting watching it. We've been really blessed. We've been for almost fourteen or fifteen years from our oldest daughter now that's you know, thirty years old. And, Given us a grandchild to play football in Wisconsin to our other kids uh, to race in the last five and a half, six years. And I have um, been going to sports events in hotels and traveling all over the country. So it'll be, it'll be different to, um, to not be turning on the TV and uh, trying to, or figuring out how to get you know, the hotel room and travel and flights and everything. And maybe a little bit of a race uh, for us um, to not uh, have the cash shooting out the uh, 
sideways like that. And so, and we've got football season coming up here. So you've, I know you're excited about that. What after this, these couple of days here for media days, what are you going to be doing for the next six weeks until season starts? Well, probably going to practice a little bit just to see what uh, our team looks like and to get ready for the season. I'm excited. We have some some new um, some new blood. It's the first team that this team, the first year that Coach Flack will have all of his own players um, that he has recruited, which I think is, is kind of healthy. A good thing usually when a coach comes in, it takes two or three years to turn over a program, get all your own players in there. But now with these COVID and red shirts and medical red shirts, I mean, we had some young men that were here six or seven years. And, uh, but now everyone is, um, I think, uh, on his program on the same page, which is, is a good thing. Well, and Minnesota is fortunate because they're one of the programs, definitely in the West, that is able to have been able to hold on to their coach to keep some continuity, which in this day and age I know is extraordinarily important, especially with the transfer portal. New players every year, I can't imagine the difficulty of maintaining continuity on a football team when you have an influx of that many new players every year. I can't imagine it. You know, I just can't. You know, even if you're a former football player, you think about the opportunity and then somebody has a good year, other teams and other coaches are reaching out to that young man and saying, you know, maybe you should be, maybe you should be playing like and uh, it's hard for a young man to you know, look at his bank account and say, well, I'm just going to stay here. So it is, it's there, It's certainly a different time. And, um, but, you know, I think that the kids are ready. It's also just kind of part of the evolution of, uh, you know, college and professional sports. I think we, we had our favorite player of our oh, I really love Graham Tarkin. Played for the Vikings for like, you know, 20 years. But that's not the case. People are going to move. They're going to change teams. They're going to try to, you know, form their own, you know, alliances. So it's uh, a different time to know what you're going to do. Daryl Thompson, I cannot thank you enough, man. Can you imagine Daryl Thompson and Anthony Thompson in the same background, back back to it? It would be great. That great. would have been fun to watch. It could have been the Thompson twins. I'm telling you, it would have been the original, man. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you. Good seeing you. Good luck to, to Minnesota this year. I don't think so this year. So won't be seeing you again this year until uh, maybe the Big Ten Championship. I hope so. Yep. Thank you for appreciate you. Good luck. Thanks.